Hey there, it's Izzy here. In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how to create an interesting effect in Motion 5. It's something you can use with kinetic typography to make text emerge out of nowhere is what it seems like, but you can also use it with images or video clips or any kind of object or shape that you have inside Motion 5. It's a really fun effect to use. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with the project browser. I'm gonna choose a motion project template. I'll use the broadcast HD 720 and I'm gonna change the frame rate to 29.97. And because we're just demonstrating this, I'll leave the duration at 10 seconds for this project. I'll click open. The first thing I like to do is change the zoom level. I'm gonna change it to fit and then I'm gonna save my project. And I already have a project here. I'm just gonna save over it. So I'll save and then replace. In Motion 5, the process is very much a workflow of selecting something and then editing it. And then you select something else and then you edit it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this group that's already here in my project. I'm gonna edit the name of it just by clicking again and I will call this text one. And I'll choose my text tool and I'm gonna to add a text layer to this group by just clicking here in the canvas. I'll just put my pointer here and I'll type Izzy in all caps. And then with it selected here, I'm going to change, let me bring up my HUD, and I'm gonna change the size to make it bigger, maybe around 160-ish, somewhere around there. That seems pretty good. I'll hit escape on the keyboard to get out of the text tool, and now you can see I'm back to my select tool. From here, I'm going to select my Izzy layer, and I'm gonna hit Command D on the keyboard to duplicate that layer. And now I have a second duplicate right on top of the first one, which is why you can't see it. It's just sitting right on top. If I click and move it over, though, you can see that, sure enough, there it is. And I'll keep it aligned with my other layer and move it just to the right of center, right around there. I think I messed it up just slightly. There we go. Now I'll select my other layer. Once again, it's select and adjust. So I'll select and adjust, and I'll move it just to the left of center. And then I'll select this one and I'm gonna change it so it doesn't say Izzy anymore. It's gonna say video in all caps. And now I need to create another group. So I'm gonna select my text one group. I'm gonna hit the plus sign here, the little plus tool, and that creates another group for me. And I'll just rename this one and I'll call it text two and I'm gonna move this group. Now, moving groups can get tricky. When you first get started, it gets a little complicated. It can throw you off, but let me show you a couple tips. I think that'll help. If I'm moving this group, I can just click and drag it and I can move it down. Now, you'll notice that if I move it anywhere here, the text one group is highlighted, and that's letting me know that if I were to drop it here, it would be inside the text one group. That's not what I want. I want it to be below, but not inside the text one group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this slightly to the left until I see that little plus sign, and then and then I can let go, and now you can see the text two group is below the text one group, but not inside. That's important. Okay, now I'm gonna select my video text layer. I'm gonna click and drag to bring it and just drop it right into text two. And now I have it organized the way I need it for this project. I have Izzy inside of text one and video inside of text two. Now, why am I going through the trouble of creating text layers inside separate groups? And the reason why is because I'm going to create a mask on this group. Now, what's a mask? A mask is a way of creating an area of transparency in your image. So for example, let's say that I choose this text one layer here and I go down here to this button. This is where I can select a mask, but I'm gonna click and drag and I'll hold down and I'm just gonna create a circle mask here real quick. And I wanna show you what happens if I create a circle mask right here in the middle of my layer. I'm just gonna click and drag and create a circle mask and then watch what happens to the letters. You can see that they start to disappear. In fact, if I click away, you can see that part of that layer is missing. Well, what it's done is it's created an area of transparency right there in the middle of this group and anything inside the group that's in that area is going to appear to be transparent. That'll, lay, that'll let the areas underneath that layer show through. Well, I don't want a circle mask. I'm going to delete that. So I'll just select it and hit delete on the keyboard. And instead, I'm going to select text one and I'm gonna create a rectangular mask over here. But before I do that, actually, I wanna create one line, a vertical line here in the middle of my canvas. So let's create one more group. With text one selected, I'll hit the plus sign once again, and I'll call this group line. And then with the group selected, I'll click and, dr and hold down until I see my line tool. And then right now it says the width is about 31. That's what my line's gonna be, that's fine. I'm gonna click and drag. Now. Right now, it's very easy for me to draw a line at an angle by accident. I don't want that. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key on the keyboard. That helps me constrain it so it's just perfectly vertical there. And let's see, I wanna make that, that looks pretty good. Now, one thing I don't like about this line is that the end caps are curved. You can see that they're curved there. 
So with this line selected, I can go to my inspector and I'm gonna close down my HUD here to make it a little easier to see what's going on. The outline section under style, there's a section called start cap. Right now it's round. I'm gonna change it to none. You can see there it is. That's where the line started. It's now a straight edge there. That's what I want. I'm gonna change my end cap to none as well. And that's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna change back to my select tool. I'm gonna choose my text one layer and I'm gonna draw another mask, except instead of doing a circular mask this time, I'm gonna do a rectangular mask. That's what I'm gonna create here. And I'm gonna draw the mask to the right of where my text is, to the right of the line. Now, it looks like this would affect the line, but it doesn't affect the line. If I draw this big rectangle here, it's gonna create an area of transparency on the text one layer only. That's very important. So that's why it doesn't look like anything changed. It just drew this red rectangular, but that line goes away when I deselect the mask. If I click away, you can see that rectangle, that red rectangular line has gone away. But that mask is there and it's applied only to the text one layer. But the only thing inside the text one layer right now is this Izzy text layer, right? That's the only thing inside text one. So why do I do this? Well, watch what happens if I select my Izzy text layer and I go to properties and I twirl down the position to make it very easy for me to see my X parameter. If I click and drag on that X parameter, watch what happens as I move it. Look at that. You can see it disappears as it goes behind that text. So now all this, all I need to do now basically is keyframe an animation to where this will slide out from behind my mask. That's it. That's very easy to do. In fact, let's do the same thing with the video text layer. So I'm gonna choose text two, the text two group. It's important to apply this to the group. And now I'm gonna create another rectangular mask and I'll just draw it to the left here of this line like this. This will give the video a place to emerge from. Watch what happens if I select my video text layer with properties. Once again, I'm gonna change the X parameter. You can see I can slide it behind the line and sure enough, I can make it emerge. It looks like it's appearing from that line there in the middle, but really it's not. It's coming out from behind that rectangular mask that I created, okay? All right, so let's see how this is looking. I'm gonna close down this line group to give myself a little more room here in my layers list. If I click away, I like the way that this is looking here. I like the spacing. So now let's go ahead and keyframe the text layers. I'll select my Izzy text layer. I'll move the playhead forward about a second, so 30 frames or so. And I want this to be the end position, so that's why I'm moving forward first. I'm gonna set a keyframe right next to the X parameter. And I'll also do the same thing to my video text layer. This little diamond here, I can click on it to set a keyframe. So now, what'll happen is on this specific frame, when the video's playing on this specific frame, these layers will be in this exact position. But I don't want them to start there. So what I'm gonna do is move the playhead to the very beginning, and now I can adjust. See how the parameter is red here, this value 35.37? That's red, letting me know that if I make any changes, it's gonna set another keyframe. Well, that's fine, that's what I want. I want there to be another keyframe here on the first frame. I'm gonna have it merge, so I'm gonna hide it here from, I'm gonna hide it behind the mask. And same thing with Izzy, I'm gonna hide it behind the mask. There we go. All right, so now if I move, if I deselect everything, move the playhead to the very beginning, and hit play, let's see what our effect looks like. There it is. That's how easy it is. And I could do this with text, I can do it with images, I could do it with video clips. You can use this mask effect to make things appear as if from almost nowhere. Now in this case, it's appearing from this line is what it looks like. But if I turn off the line and play it for you, you can see that I can have it appear as if from nowhere there. That's a common effect that you see happen inside videos that you see. It's a type of kinetic typography for sure, but once again, you can use any kind of object in Motion 5 to create the same kind of effect. Hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.